So the video that I was going to make was going to be about like my fears leading up to this journey and my first fears on this journey, but the most common question I've gotten about this journey is actually about like my personal safety, my physical safety. It seems like that's what people are fearing for me the most. I guess I wasn't really scared of it. I already had like a safety plan in place because so many people keep asking me about it. I wanted to share my safety routine with you. First things first, Nick taught me this. I think he uses different colors, but I like to think of it as a stoplight. Red, you are seeing everything as a threat. You're just, you're stopped. You can't move because you're perceiving everything around you as a threat. You're paranoid. And this is okay if like you've realized that there is a threat. You kind of want to get to this place where you're ready to fight. You're ready to protect yourself. You're looking for other threats. And then there's yellow which is being cautious. So you're not just moving blindly and carefree through the environment. You're aware of yourself, you're aware of your space, you're aware of your things, you're aware of other people around you. And you're kind of assessing for threats, but you're still enjoying your life and enjoying the moment. This is where you wanna be. If I'm walking into a gas station, walking into a rest stop, um, I'm not texting while I'm walking, I'm alert, I'm looking around seeing who's around and what they're doing and then there's green this is also a place that you don't want to be so green basically like you're just going that this would be like texting and walking you're not paying any attention to your surroundings you just think it's go time but um this is when you know people could be attacked i don't know by anything it doesn't have to be like a scary murderer but you know you could trip and fall and hurt yourself there might be some wildlife that you're not paying attention to and then like you disturb it and it tries to attack you or there could be someone who is actively posing a threat and you're not paying any attention so i know it seems really simple but the first step is just stay aware also when i was younger my dad taught me how to fight i haven't been in real fights i guess but my dad just taught me like basic self-defense like if someone is trying to attack you depending on you know where they're coming from like go for sensitive areas of their bodies if you're fearing for your life fight for your life so if someone's coming at you like go for their eyes you can pop an eye like a grape if they're behind you and they're like grabbing you you can kick like Try to kick their kneecap and then slide your heel down their shin. It's really painful to get hit in the shin. You probably know this. When I was younger, my dad always wanted me to like practice fighting him. He like always wanted me to show him that I could fight. So I remember one time when I was really young sitting with him and he's like, punch me in the face. Prove that you can do it. Punch me in the face. And I was like, no, I don't want to. And he was like, punch me in the face. And we kept going back and forth like that. And finally I was like, okay, fine. And I punched him in the face and I split his lip open. Next, we're gonna get into the safety tools. Well, it looks like a Christmas tree behind me. Their house is so cute. It's snowing outside. You'll see that in the next video. So we're gonna get into safety tools. Phone, hello, number one. I think, you know, I will definitely be in some areas that don't have cell service, but for the most part, like this is just a great safety tool. So I have an entire safety team, Abigail Dean's safety team in place i have someone from every time zone in the united states that is tracking my location when i'm on the move they know when i'm leaving and when i expect to get where i'm getting to they have my travel plans and if i'm going into an area that is remote doesn't have any cell phone signal then they have a specific time and date that i need to contact them by saying that i made it out and i'm okay otherwise they will be contacting local authorities to find me but we're not gonna get there. This is just the plan in case. <laughs> now these are more fun. First, basic safety, especially at night. Um, I have flashlights all over my car. I need to get batteries for this one. Again, this is just like general safety. If you're walking to use the restroom at night, you're gonna wanna see so you don't trip over something, run into wildlife, or identify a murderer. Next, I have knives. I have a few knives. This is just, you know, my favorite. Oh my gosh, there's stuff stuck on it. I have a bunch of gems that spilled in my purse, so that's embarrassing. This is my favorite pocket knife, um, and mainly I use it just to open packaging. I like to keep a few different knives in a few places. So I'll have one in my backpack, I'll have one in my purse, I'll have one in my car. I might have them in different places in my car, just another little pocket knife. My mom always had me watching Discovery TV with her. She's a psychologist, she's just fascinated by serial killers and criminals, so rest stops really freak me out. The 
first night I was driving, I really had to pee and it was like 11 o'clock at night and I was just terrified to stop. But I was literally going to pee my pants in my car if I didn't stop at this rest station in the middle of Kansas. So I stopped, but I'm going to try to not stop in random places at night because that just really freaks me out. So I had this around my neck. This is my favorite knife. I've never used it for anything besides a feeling of security. And there are different knife laws going through different states in case you didn't know that because this is a fixed blade. Um, some places I have to like open carry, I can't conceal carry. I don't know, it's kind of weird. I didn't realize there were like knife laws like that. So then when I was going into this rest station, I had that around my neck. I had my phone in one hand and then I had my hand in my purse holding my pepper spray. This is a pepper gel. So I've had it forever, like it's still not expired. Um, someone said I should try it to make sure that it's still like pressurized. I think that's a great idea because I already tried filming this video. Actually, I filmed the whole thing and I got to my favorite safety toy. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the highlight of the event. It's so loud and scary. I really don't like doing this. They're just so scary. Luckily, I've never had to use them. And I turned on the safety, okay, and I went like this, and it's so loud. Uh, it freaks me out even though I know it's dead. So it was a total letdown, and I've had to refilm this video. Also, I had lipstick on my teeth in the last video, so it's honestly the most terrifying sound ever. And it really freaks me out to have it in my purse or my pocket because I'm just terrified it's going to accidentally discharge. Okay, again, this just like freaks me out so much and I'm thankful I've never had to use it, but I think this would be a really good safety tool in the event that I'm kind of in like more of a, a like a drawn out fight. I think it would take me a minute to like whip this out of the case, turn on the safety and... Damn it, did this break? This is the biggest letdown of my life. My taser is broken. I've never even had the chance to use it on someone. I've, I've heard it before. And these batteries were so expensive. This is such a letdown. Obviously, like, things are working because it has a little flashlight on it. I'm supposed to put this on. Maybe I have to wait for a charge. Okay, this might be it. Ah. Okay, it worked. <laughs> Can you see why I'm terrified of this? Okay, but now we know it works. So if I ever have to pull it out. Oh my God, it gets my heart raising. Hopefully like if someone was trying to attack me, I could just pull it out and do that and they would run the fuck away. Literally the worst sound ever. I'm so thankful that worked. Whew, okay, so yeah, I have all of those tools and I may or may not leave this in here, but I'm also a gun owner. And so different states have different gun laws. So it's definitely something to pay attention to. The last little bit is to have some gloves to clean up the mess um, or, you know, if you're grabbing firewood. Again, like, I guess this is like an anti-attack safety video because that seems like that's what people are most worried about for me, that I'm going to get, like, kidnapped, raped, or killed, which I'm not very worried about. I just think the chances of that happening are really low, but um, being someone who's been in the wilderness, who's worked on a wilderness trail crew, who like grew up camping and stuff, I think actually the biggest risk is first aid stuff like grabbing firewood without gloves and cutting myself or tripping and falling, spraining an ankle, not being able to get help, like that kind of thing. I think that's really where I need to be the most careful, the most aware, and the most cautious. So I think things like this, gloves, my bike helmet, good shoes, proper gear, like that's what's really gonna keep me safe. Pepper spray, taser, these knives, like, you know, it's good to have that security and feel like I can protect myself if it comes to that, but I really don't see that actually being a threat to my safety. Thank you so much for subscribing and coming on this journey with me. I'm so excited to get to really beautiful places and share that with you. And I have a really cool video coming for you because the wildfires here are just like crazy. Now it's snowing, so I got some cool footage of that and that's coming your way. I'm also going to be answering all of your questions in a coming video. Thank you so much for subscribing before September 7th and submitting those questions. I'm really excited to answer them for you. I'll see you soon. Love you always.